I'm going to get back to that story, Shunny. Just, just you listen to Boomer Great One. He's going to tell you about how it was back in the olden days, back, back before fire, back when we walked uphill for everything. In fact, we didn't even have a concept of downhill because there was no downhill. Everything was uphill. We thought that was normal. We didn't even have a word for it because there was no alternative. It was uphill all the time. You just need to to reach down and and grab yourselves by your bootstraps and and pull yourselves up, shunny. Because when I was your age, I bought a house for $25,000. And I made that money on my paper route and busing tables at the local cafe. And if I could do it, you can do it too. You just need to to reach down and pull yourself up and, and just Buckle up, buckle up there, buckaroo. God, I hate boomers. Speaking of boomers, so, God, 30 years ago coming up on now, I distinctly remember being in college, and across the river you had uh, the Star Tribune, which was the main publication of Minneapolis, and St. Paul had the Pioneer Press. And I had never met any Star Tribune journalist or journalist. I had nothing against them or anything like that. But literally it, it was like this odd feeling that across the river in a building, there was a group of boomer journalists who just hated my fucking guts because I was conservative, because I was libertarian, because I wanted low taxes, increasingly because you're white, because you're male and heaven help you for a combination of both. And it was just, just, you know, you all make fun of the boomers, but you don't figure out the boomers you make fun of are just parasitic leftists. That's, you know, you guys would have sucked Bill Clinton's dick like Monica Lewinsky. Like, oh, my God, he's so cool. He plays the saxophone. Meanwhile, you're getting fucked over by him. And you'd be like, oh, I wasn't that brainwashable. Oh, my God, I can't believe the boomers screwed me over. <clears throat> and just to, it, it was, it was ideological hatred. Uh, these people were, were mindless leftists. Uh, as we're all journalists, this was like mainstream, you know, that was like the reputable newspaper. <clears throat> and uh, it it wasn't just the Star Tribune. But when you look back in hindsight, it was all journalists, all of you. And this goes back to my theory, which isn't really a theory, it's just true. Lazy people are inferior. Lazy people are evil. Lazy people have no ethics or, or principles or standards. And so you will find fields that employ lazy people to be worthless pieces of shit, to be unethical, to always advocate parasitism, to always advocate th uh, theft, to never advocate responsibility. <clears throat> and now it, it, it took way too long, 30 fucking years, for the sun to shine on this degenerate industry, and that is the journalism industry. Whereas perhaps at one time, if you're trying to take down a mafia boss, or a, 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 a truly corrupt politician. Now it's just, it's boomers and younger hobbyists, ideologues, lazy adult children who don't want to work. And that's who journalists are. And now we see that. Now we see, I, I, the Star Tribune has become a joke. No one really cares about it. <clears throat> All these mainstream publications, and thank God the internet came around and like, now nah, we'll we'll just do our own journalism. Thank you very much. And I love watching these enemies of mine, these assholes, these inferior, vile, fucking degenerate pieces of shit suffer. I love seeing them have to get a real job. <clears throat> if you'd done your job and were real journalists, you know, reporting like, then you, okay, fine. You, hey, you ought to keep these people like the fourth branch of government. You guys are nothing but dick sucking propaganda arms of the Democrat Party and leftist parties. That's it. Shut the fuck up. You're worthless. No one should listen to you. And sad, that's, that's what it's become. Everyone knows that. Now, news article, Condi Nast. And I read this, I was like, oh, I remember that aspect. I remember that that other group of journalists, who, which you probably didn't read. But this would be germane for you, boys. Uh, Condi Nass plans to lay, plans more layoffs, files charge against union as staffers march to executive offices. 
talk about tone deaf boomers. And I, I don't mean age boomers. I mean, anyone who's a journalist, you guys produce an inferior product. There's a billion of you. Everyone wants to be journos. People could do their own journalism through the internet. We don't need you anymore. You don't report news. You're all propagandists. And you have the arrogance and cockiness to go and march against a company that probably doesn't have the money. That you've long been replaced by the internet. You know, it's like, um, what was the, it was a, <clears throat> which James Bond? Um, Pierce Brosnan, where the enemy says, why won't you just die? A serious question. Why don't you, why don't you just, guys, just give it up? This is 10 years ago. The, the Huffington Post, uh, they weren't paying their journalists. Does that tell you something? You know, this this tail desperately trying to wag a dead dog. Just give it up. Learn to code. Become a productive member. That's that's what scares them the most. That's what scares them more than anything. Uh unionist staffers march to oh, you're gonna show the patriarchy. <laughs> learn to code, learn to suck a dick. Learn to paint, learn to roof, learn to anything. What now you get to be productive members of society. <clears throat> That's really what most journalists are afraid of, is they have to work real jobs. That's all it is. It's all they are. Uh, meanwhile, employees who are on the layoff list have been told they are getting reassigned <clears throat> to a group separate from the previous branches being called the central content unit. A person familiar says, just give it up. Give it up. All right. Cox Internet's going to be this way. Fine. I'll wait for the Internet to come back. Just bear with me. Cox Internet, everybody, when you come to Vegas. Uh, GQ used to mean Gentleman's Quarterly. It was a men's magazine. And now it's just populated by feminists and, and gay writers. Nothing wrong with gay writers. Absolutely everything wrong with feminist writers. This has nothing to do with men's stuff. It was a dead brand, just like Sports Illustrated, just like Playboy. It got picked up by some, you know, private equity firms as well. The brands got value. <clears throat> and in a last Hail Mary attempt, because you're already broke, then you go woke. According to uh, uh, who was the guy? I forget who I forgot who it was. Like, oh, my God. Transsexual black man on front cover of Playboy. Oh, fuck off. And GQ just Hail Mary Pass. Look, zany, radical, leftist, hatred po journalism. That's what it is. <clears throat> they're, just, they're just apparent about it now. They're just clear about it. Maybe we got good enough connection. The already tenuous relationship between Condé Nast, Nast and its union that represents around 550 of its staffers at Vanity Fair, Vogue, and GQ, among other publications, appear to be hanging by a thread. On Wednesday afternoon, around 30 Condé Nast union members marched to executive offices to protest layoffs. You people, you fuckers are worthless. There's no profit. No one wants to buy your shit anymore. Get that through your fucking head. You're a worthless human being. I mean, not ethically, although ethically I'd argue the same, but you're at, you, you contribute nothing of value to the economy. <clears throat> Go back. You're the horse and buggy industry. Retool. Can you imagine these 35 union members going in pro? Ah, so fucking tone deaf about their own industry. They don't realize there ain't no money anymore. To protest additional layoffs that they say were threatened during labor negotiations on Tuesday. Could you imagine being the manager or the owner of Condé Nast and having to deal with this fucking bullshit? Uh, we ain't got no advertisements. Uh, we just alienated half the population, all the penite people we alienated. We've basically spat in the faces of people for 30 years, 40 years. I'm going to get into that later. <clears throat> uh, we have no goodwill with the American public. The technology has obsoleted us. And we got these arrogant, worthless, unemployable, talentless fuckwits bitching and whining about their labor contract. 
<clears throat> During Tuesday's bargaining session over a first contract, the company said it intended to add five more staffers to its pre-existing list of employees set to be cut and warned that the company could add more, according to Condi Union, which also represents workers at Condi Nass Entertainment. Bon Appetit, Allure, Architectural Digest, Condi Nass Traveler, <clears throat> Epicurious, Teen Vogue, Glamour, and Self. Now, let me interject right here. Teen Vogue, Glamour, Self, and then you have Vanity Fair and Vogue. Now, it was unbeknownst to young, then young Cappy, and then young Rolo, and then young Thor. But us old timers, we didn't know what was this is, the, this is before the internet. But in the 80s, girls would read those, those magazines. Vogue, Teen Beat, all that other shit. <clears throat> we didn't know what was going on. And what you guys are acutely aware of now and today because of the internet, because we have data and statistics, we can chart, we can have the medium that we're using now with whether it's YouTube or blog or whatever. <clears throat> we're allowed to network and do a meta study, compare our notes. You, the, the simple thing like, oh, yeah, girls, like a simple theory. Girls don't like guys that much. Right? We can look at it, show you the data and the charts. And some people may disagree, but for those of you like, yeah, it, it seems to be that case. To come to that conclusion pre-internet was borderline impossible. You had to just do it through trial and error. And everyone would say, the, well, the common variable is you. And little did we know that there was this pre-internet network that was happening <clears throat> that guided, informed, and shaped women's opinion of men. And it was there in like these teen magazines. Articles, a billion ways to tell if your boyfriend's a dick, and one to tell if he's all right. And what I would love to do is go get some old back issues. I, and I've actually looked for them, and, and they're kind of hard to come by. I want to see what fucking Marxist, feminist, man-hating shit were these articles or these magazines writing. I don't know if Condi Nast owned these publications back in the day, but their portfolio has a lot of the same ones there. And it was, it was like, it was like uh, the guns of Navarone. Where David, they just, it's a World War II thing. They're, a, they're a, a commando group and they just keep getting bad luck. Like they get exposed, they get ambushed. And then David Niven says, Hey, we, ever since we got here, we've been one, running into one trap or another. And he starts to deduce that they were betrayed, that, that they got a mole or a leak. And I don't want to give away the movie. It's a spectacular movie. You should watch it. <clears throat> But by the time the early 90s, late 80s rolled around, guys are like, some ain't right. Like, is it, should it be this difficult? Because all we had was Leave it to Beaver and the Cosby Show and uh, whatever else, uh, family ties and growing pains. And it seemed like the mom and the dad didn't hate each other. What the hell's going on? We literally thought, here's going to be some old school stuff I said before, but old timer Gen X. And There's something wrong with the girls in the school. This is this good? I can't wait. There's something, something in the water here. Something geographically wrong here. <laughs> and then you go to a different school. You go to college. You're like it's the same man. I got bad luck. It must be me. No. Even though there was no internet, there was a network. There was a propaganda. There was a information network <clears throat> through these type of magazines where women coalesced around some general theories, some general strategies, and even kind of formed a quasi cartel. Not not consciously, but if all the girls read the same article and they all did the same thing, and girls never do the same thing other girls do, right? I mean, look at fashion. They're all just so variable. They never do the cold shoulder, shoulder or the poofy bangs or hot white girl summer. Uh, is that the one with the girls? They got, like, all the straw hats and the fucking brown boots, and they're out at some fucking farm. Women never standardize or, or commoditize their behavior. They never have a hive mindset. They never would. They're totally not susceptible to forming a very effective cartel through common and consistent behavior. Never. They're as independent as Tony Stark. But you, you, we're more like, what the hell? What? Start reading Sylvia Plath, and I would even argue going back to the 60s, especially through their mothers and, and all that, <clears throat> definitely the teachers. Not that it was as purposeful, but a lot of feminist doctrine stars. 60s feminist doctrine was in these publications and therefore put into the minds of these young upcoming ladies 
that would then go on to, to form and, and then ultimately answer our question. Why is Gen X getting divorced as much as the boomers? What the fuck? I thought we learned our lesson. Ah, you all didn't read the exact same fucking magazines, the exact same articles as every other man in America. We didn't have that. If anything, you had probably Sports Illustrated and you talked about games. You weren't really like, you know, you just knew. I like girls. <clears throat> that was it. And it, it shouldn't have taken 30, in this case, 40 years. I don't know what these articles are writing about in the 70s. I don't know where the switch came from. Good housekeeping. Like, hey, you should like men and you know maintain the house and just be pleasant to, oh, they're the enemy and fuck those guys. And aren't they scum? But the, you know, and even the same journalists aren't the same. I, I do want to look up old journalists, journalists, assholes, propagandists, pieces of fucking shit. Who divided men and women? Who wrote for these magazines? I want they're they're boomer women now. I want to see where they are. I mean, like E. Jean is one of those. She's still alive and she's prominent because she sued Trump and so forth. But go look at E. Jean. Look at that. That's the type. That's the journalist who wrote for these magazines. And what a happy person she is. <clears throat> and it shouldn't have taken decades to realize that this was vile. This was propaganda. This was lies. It had an agenda, and it was filled with hate. This was hatred journalism. And now at the last dying gas, these fuck, I mean, who are these people that you're protesting? How, how dense are you unaware of the internet? Are you all a bunch of boomers who didn't save enough money for retirement? And come on, baby, lighted my fire while smoking the pot and thinking, oh, we took down Nixon. Yeah, 50 fucking years ago. <clears throat> the Condi Union further alleges that the company did not provide any counter proposals on union asked from the previous week. You're all getting laid off. There's no money. On remote work and paid time off, for instance. Well, I'm with you there on the remote work. There's no reason for you to have to come into the office. During Tuesday's meeting on Zoom, which management abrupt ended apparently ended abruptly. Yeah, because they got more important shit to do. Meanwhile, okay, here's another thing. And all these, all the article, all the magazines you just listed, what? You can't find some leftist to write boring, blank shit pieces that are anti-male, anti-white, anti-capitalism, pro-feminism. I mean, it's so bad you guys could be replaced by AI. Literally, you could be like, AI, you know, Google's art, Gemini, they already got the hatred of white males going on, right? They already got that bias. AI, can, you could be replaced by fucking software. It's not going to be until, and I don't know what private equity group or vulture firm would come in and buy the brand. I think they did that with Deadspin to buy it. And then, here, sit, sit down. Hold on. What if someone were to come in and buy Gentleman's Quarterly? And I hope we're all sitting down. <clears throat> all right, Beauregard, fetch the fainting couch. It's going to blow your mind away. And you wrote about men's issues. Like, there's no women, there's no gay people writing about it, all right? I, I, you know what I take? There could be a gay section. There could be a gay man section, Gentleman's Quarterly. It would skew fashion. I think, okay, I take that back. <clears throat> but no politics. Just Gentleman's Quarterly. Like, what the fucking title suggested? Kotaku. All right, please, all oh God almighty, sell that fucking piece of shit off. And then maybe you write honestly about video games and comic books and other nerdy stuff. It was like this, there's, I think it was called Nintendo Power. It was Nintendo's magazine. Okay, yeah, it was to sell video games. But guess what they wrote about? <gasps> video games. Well, uh, was there enough drooping black vagina in the latest Mario Brothers? Why is there such Italian overrepresentation? And what it means to the trans community? Shut the fuck up. <clears throat> Meanwhile, on Tuesday, Condé Nast filed an unfair labor practice charge against the Condé's, Condé's Union Umbrella Labor Organization. I, I love it when you leftists fight each other. I love it when you lazy sack of shits fight each other. <clears throat> uh, the News Guild of New York for bad faith surface bargaining, according to a company memo circulated to staffers who belong to the Condé Union. The company's reasons include that in four months of bargaining, they, the union, have yet to address our workforce reduction proposal, seriously. I love you guys. Are nego I love you're wasting this time. Your job is literally to take turds and put them in punch bowls. And you can't imagine why no one wants to buy your punch. 
why no, why no one wants to buy your service. This would all go away if you did actual journalism when you have to scale it down. They don't need that many of you people. And you reported the truth. Or if it's not political, you just reported, you know, Teen Vogue, girls fashion, not the hatred of men. And that's what you were writing. <clears throat> what what if, you know, what's the other one here? Is we got a sports one? Bon Appetit. If I open up, I've got a question. Serious question. Serious. This is, this is how bad you journalists are. If I were to get a modern day or a issue of Bon Appetit, would the articles be about food and culinary arts and, and dining? Or would there be fucking vag and dick, communist, Marxist, feminist propaganda shoved in there? W would I just be able to read about culinary food? Or do I got to rem be reminded about the plight of the Hispanic man? <clears throat> Who gets to keep dropping turds? We're not paid enough to drop turds in the punch bowl. <clears throat> the company's reasons include that in four months of bargaining, they, the union, have yet to address a workforce reduction proposal seriously, making just one proposal related to layoffs in December that called for a minimum of seven months severance of COBRA for affected staffers and requested just 28 cuts instead of the originally proposed 94. We have also informed. Here's another question I got. Can you journals just go do what I did, which I wasn't really necessarily intending to do? Can you just write your own blog, write about what you write, and then go monetize it yourself? Why are you wasting your time? Monetize yourself, become a journalist of one. Oh, because there's a billion fucking lefty, man hating, capitalism hating, dick hating, straight hating, Christian hating, hating, hating journos anyway. A sea of leftist hatred for the productive people or the not minority people. <clears throat> Imagine that hatred doesn't sell, huh? In the statement, News Guild of New York President Susan DeCavarava called the charge a blatant attempt to force us into accepting their management layoffs plan. She added, I got news for you, lady. You're going to accept it whether you want it or not because there ain't no fucking money. As we have throughout negotiations, we are ready to bargain when management wants to stop the theatrics and bargain in good faith. Good. You two, it's like arm of the communists and the Nazis. Like You just all fight on that eastern front. How can we arm you guys more to wipe each other out? The news layoffs were, were proposed nearly two weeks after Axios reported that Condi Nast Roger, CEO Roger Lynch said the company doesn't have plans for any further reductions, which has irked the unions and its members. Lynch first announced that the company was intending to lay off 5% of its workforce on November 1st, and Gandhi Union has been bargaining those cuts ever since. Before Tuesday, the company told the union that was eyeballing 94 union members around 70% of the Gandhi Union. <laughs> So, yeah, about 600 people you got. Give it up. Give it up. Sell the brands. Sell it to, to people who are going to write good journalism. Just give it up. I mean, right now, here, just hear me out. <clears throat> what if there was a small little private equity group, group or a hedge fund, some kind of a venture capital group, would buy uh, Sports Illustrated for $10,000? Like, this is a money-losing operation. Give us it. Give us the brand. You fire everyone and you just do a good old fashioned monthly sw sports swimsuit illustrated. And it's like no tattoos, no piercings. What if you just did that? Hmm. And dare I say some good writing like Playboy used to have. Actually, I read it for the articles. Actually, there were people who read it for because the articles were good. Heaven forbid, like we have like peanut butter and chocolate. Heaven forbid we have tits and good journalism and good writing. Oh God, we can't have that. No, let's get a 24 year old idiot who grew up in the suburbs and had a problem in her life, and she's going to tell us how she'd solve the world. <clears throat> it's simply unacceptable. We are showing that today, according to Vanity Fair staff writer and shop steward Aaron Vanderhoof, who attended Wednesday's protest. Neither Lynch nor chief content officer and global editorial director. Geez, top heavy much? You just get rid of all these editors. Like, <clears throat> you're all going to, you just have writers. You're all going to write a good quality article that's informative and a benefit to the reader 
And it would be a pleasure to read because you write well. And there's going to be no fucking politics. Here, free advice, politics-free publication. A politics-free publication. Little stamp, politics-free publication. <clears throat> I got a question. This is going way back. And I, I God, I don't know if any of my black uh, audience members are old enough. To, is Ebony still in our, is that still a magazine? I would love, go back in the olden times. Go back to like, say, 70s or 80s. And were the articles in Ebony about like black culture, be it jazz or athletics, or um, I'd even allow for a little bit of pop. Was it was it good writing about black culture back then? Ebony, say seventies, eighties, compared to what it is. I mean, if Ebony's still a publication, I can't imagine what a negative nanny, negative Nelly, that publication has to be today. I can't imagine. And so black people don't really enjoy reading it; they just get pissed off. <clears throat> Whitey Weekly. There we go. <laughs> uh, management gathered in a room and staffers demonstrated. I can't tell you where those five jobs are coming from, or even if it's just five, because that was unclear. You're arguing over five jobs, huh? This is this is the article. The article written here is even worth five jobs. <clears throat> Boy, you can't. Be, I'm sorry, you hate journalists. Can't make no money. That's too bad. Now imagine if you wrote something good, not even positive. Doesn't have to be anti-hate, which I guess would be complimentary or, or dick sucking. What if you just reported some interesting facts? <clears throat> I, but I can tell you that some of the people already on the list are very fundamental to helping Condi Nast weather out the storm of the whole digital media decade. She said, no, no. Those staffers who are on layoffs list have been told that they are getting reassigned to a separate group with the central content unit while exactly. Bah, 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 dip, bah, bah, bah. <clears throat> Two parties staged a walkout the day of the nomination for the 96 Academy Awards. Oh, yeah, that shit, because people are watching that too. Yeah, follow that under the world doesn't give a fuck. I'm glad to see it. People have had to endure your hatred, your antagonism, your bigotry, your advocation of just a, a, a lower class of living, an inferior culture, a degraded culture. Fuck you, the new employees and the old employees. Fuck you. All that money you're not making, that's the rest of the world saying, fuck you. We're all happy you hate journals are getting fired. We're all happy to see you hate journalists like have to find real jobs. And then they act all indignant. Oh, my God, you're just so big. And they're like, you hate us. You want us dead. I mean, literally, you, you go all the way up to like, oh, we should kill you. Because you damn well know they would, they would gladly murder all the Republicans. They gladly would. <clears throat> Just love how they cowardly hide behind journalism as what it is what they do. Link below. Oh my God, you want to see actual content that isn't like, oh my God, twiddling my hoo ha, the sad dialogues of a girl who's oppressed by systematic things. Got everything linked below. My books, which actually sell on like you journals, I didn't need an employer for that. Ranging from everything from financial planning books to <clears throat> philosophy books to countering all the fucking man hatred, all the teen Vogue and whatever and teen beat and all that fucking misandry, de countering decades of that shit, all compiled into some convenient books. We got those books too. <clears throat> got my courses available on Teachable. Those kind of along the same vein, financial planning type of books. Those are those are pretty much all financial. Financial. There's how to stop being lazy. Maybe you journalists could take that course. Achieving financial excellence, achieving minimalism, which is available for enrollment for the next ten days. That one I do not keep open all the time because I want people to take it seriously. <clears throat> what the hell's the other one? Was... Oh, and the dad you never had, which obviously again because of all the man hatred in the journalism industry. I know you girls didn't have your daddy. Maybe you go take that course and let go of the hate, anger, and hatred. Maybe you don't have to end up like E. Jean. But she got a lot of money and beat Trump. Yeah, look how happy she is. Holy pissed away life, Batman. What else is there? Um, <clears throat> oh, the subscribe star. 
I have a membership thing. The platform I use for that is Subscribestar. Someone asked me if I like Subscribestar. I like it very much. It's very easy to use. I recommend everyone use it. Uh, it's $2 a month, and that gets you access to all the pinups. You know, handful. Uh, back in the day when female fans would send pinups in. And then um, uh, access to the Road Trip podcast, which I just posted a, a new one. <clears throat> what the hell else? Uh, there's the Amazon affiliate link. If you want to do all your Amazon shopping, go click down below. Bookmark it because you're not going to remember this video. And if you don't know oh, where, where I forgot the link, you can always go to olderbrother.com slash donate and click on the Amazon banner there. <clears throat> I think that's it. Books, subscribe, star, Amazon courses. Yep. All right. Let's go to the Super Chats and have ourselves a treat. Cappy Sun, Big Man Chewy. <laughs> If you walk three miles an hour and the nearest gas station is half a mile away, why is it taking you over 18 years to go cigarettes? Please come back, Daddy. <laughs> I never smoked cigarettes. See, that should have been the tip-off. When I say I'm going out for cigarettes, you all should have said, wait a minute, Daddy Cappy don't smoke. I got a son, everybody. Everyone, I got a son. Now he's reached back out to me. I stepped in San Francisco shit. Five bucks. Journalism isn't the problem. They are. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Journalism is absolutely critical. I've always referred to it as the nervous system of, well, of the United States, but it's any um, culture, any country. <clears throat> and right now you're not getting information accurate. Like if you put your hand on a hot stove, your body will immediately tell you the very real fact. It hurts and it's burning and it's hot. Journalists, you put your hand on a hot burning stove. Oh, it feels good. If you feel pain or because it's because you hate women. The, the journalism is not the problem. It's these vile, disgusting human beings. And they're going to follow us productive people everywhere we go and poison everything. Yeah, <clears throat> a lot of it is jealousy. A lot of it is work avoidance. And they need us to pay the extra taxes to subsidize them. I am fascinated. Like, I understand the government subsidizing pieces of shit. I get that because you're buying votes. I do not understand where all these Silicon Valley companies, all these dying journalism brands and then um movies like where what private companies are buying i mean you can look it up i mean you, i think it's, it's go media bought out kotaku or some <clears throat> i know who they are what private sector individual who has a fiduciary responsibility for their funders and investors would buy these pieces of shit what are you doing who are the idiot venture fund people that funded all these vaporware shit fine uh, uh, tech companies? What, what the fuck? Who funded the the magical so society of magical Negroes? Who funded that? We don't know what the budget is because it hasn't been published. But how much you want to bet? And then where where it gets paid? How much you want to bet? Some uh, tax dollars, some grant money got to make that piece of shit. It's the same thing with. Uh, Director X, the dickless wonder up in Canada, who needed white, disproportionately white people tax money. Everyone paid, all the Canadians just saying disproportionately white people's tax money to go make an anti-white film. <clears throat> and it was shit. Fucking shit. Reed Schwartz or five bucks. Love the hope for Gamergate 2. There's even... There's an articles that came out recently that gamers are far right and can't get laid. Man, it's all. Yeah, hey, I, okay, fine, game of great to whatever, Disney. I enjoy watching it. But at the end of the day, let me ask you this. Could you, let's say you on your little lonesome, could you have cost Disney a billion dollar loss? Through whatever, a lawsuit or what, I mean, I, I don't know. Could you have really caused them a billion dollar loss? They're hurting themselves. They're hurting themselves way more than you ever could. Um, I I love it that I guess the acolyte trailer dropped, and they interviewed the the just most man hating looking woman. There's a chance she's not man hating. Sure, there's a chance she's not some woke propagandist piece of shit. Sure, there's a chance, but not really. Not with the physiognomy looking. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, this is just going to be more woke feminist shit. <clears throat> like, go ahead, keep doing it. And then uh, what was the studio that made, um, uh, I think Gamer or uh, Sweet Baby was involved. Uh, 
to kill the Justice League? What was the studio that did kill the Justice League? Was it Bethesda? Well, whoever whoever made this woke fucking shit, they lost at least a hundred million. Video games are expensive to make. They just lose. Go ahead, keep losing hundreds of millions. We couldn't hurt. It's like communists. What's the quickest way to kill a bunch of communists? Just, just let them implement communism. You can't kill them faster. You the Nazis couldn't kill people in war faster than communists could kill their own in peacetime. You just like, let them do their thing. How you make a fat girl miserable? Nothing. Just let her be fat and think she's deserving fucking Henry Cavill. Let them live in their delusion. <clears throat> think about all these delusional. Think about this. You are so fucking stupid, so fucking delusional. You're going to go protest. 35 of you guys are going to go protest. Cutting ass for your fucking journal job. Instead of getting off your ass and going to the community college to learn to become some kind of like red... Uh, x-ray tech or dental hygienist or something that has a fucking job at the end of it x runner 55 five bucks cap we learned about yellow journalism in school and how it got the u.s into world war one yeah the uh hearst wasn't it sinking of the main <clears throat> why do people think that the same people changed um there was real journalism um and yes there was the sensational journalism britain's always had tabloids but this this the watching these petulant adult children constantly beg for an allowance from a dying industry when all they did was actual real bigotry and hatred. All right. I understand. Oh my God, the Spanish, they sank the main. Ooh, edgy by our shit, which is pretty atrocious in its own right. But oh my God, men, dicks, am I right? Subtly and subconsciously for decades in teen girls' magazines? What? And now they're like, what? What are you going to, again, you put turds in the punch bowl and you expect to get paid for that? I'm surprised the American people in the public, like, oh my God, rat turd punch. I fucking love it. Oh my God, I hate myself. You're right. <clears throat> I should eat more turds. Reg trait, 10 British pounds. Hey, Cappy, here's a contribution for your first journalism degree so you can start writing. Yeah, I couldn't write. I flunked out of seventh grade English. I don't have a journalism degree. I can't write books or have a blog or be some kind of internet personality. You, you can't have, I remember, <clears throat> and they took it down. Some fucking boomer. And it was old school. He was from the old publishing houses in New York. And he would, did not like that online, you know, like Amazon allowed people to publish their own books. He's like, how pe Ameri people don't know what's good. How dare they decide what's good on their own? They need people like us, like the, the editors, like the, the people who are the publishing houses. They took that down right quick. And I wish I saved the email, or not the email, the article. I want to know who that man was. Fucking tyrannical shit, just like Larry Fink. I'm going to force people to change their behavior. Well, that's out. Everyone knows that about Larry Fink. Keep phone Democrat, everybody. Keep voting Democrat. BlackRock is Democrat. They're not Republican. Go look it up. Reed Schwartz or 10 bucks. Cap, with all this DEI stuff and race and focusing on traits, how much racism and sexism will this create? Oh, way more than there was. Way more. Similar to what? Similar at to the video you did on Disney ruining female care. Oh, I see. <clears throat> like it's going to have a negative effect? Yeah. Uh, on uh, Okay, so... All the DEI and the victimhood and the race baiting and all that. But in the particular case of Disney using affirmative action, well beyond the capacity and ability of the people they hire, it's going to unfairly hurt hardworking hard men and women of different races. Uh, yes, very much so. Because th think about this, all right? <clears throat> Let's go back, what is it, 10 years ago? Let's say you're the guy who played Finn. You're all the prospective actors and actresses for the upcoming prequels. No, sequels. Yeah, to Star Wars, right? Ray, Finn, Rose Tico, all, the, all those actors and actresses, right? Here's Disney say, hey, you want to come and star in this? Y'all would jump at it, right? You would all jump at it. <clears throat> you didn't happened to tell them that there were affirmative action hires. And by the way, 
So were all, almost exclusively, so were all the writers and all the production capacity. So they didn't hire the best. They just hired the most diverse. Sure, are there good writers? And yes, of course, but they weren't the best. And now you've got this shit product that comes out that your name is attached to. And it just, just well, I don't know if it destroys, but it absolutely wrecked or, or impeded these people's careers. Like, for example, um, <clears throat> McCarthy. Um, she was, I forget her name. She's a good actress. Uh, and, and I guess most of the actresses that were in the female Ghostbusters in 2016, they're not bad actresses, but the, the product was such propagandist feminist horse shit. The average person does it. Well, they were just doing it. Uh, uh, what is McCarthy's first name? It doesn't matter, but they were associated with such tremendous horse shit that they can't find work down the road later. So that is not helping these actors and actresses of minority uh, <clears throat> people of color. It's not helping their careers. And now you, you really got to look where Disney has, you know, the first, I think it was black female Marvel led director on a Tuesday by a left-handed journal. Well, I don't know what the latest award they just pulled out of their ass was, but I think it was the first female of color director of a Marvel film did the Marvels and it was horrible. And where you're going to start, it's, it's like, can women do anything right? I mean, you got fail after fail after fail after fail. And these are the big and most promoted ones. And it's the most in your face that now it starts to overshadow other female minority directors. And there's some go back in there who did a great job. It's just that back in the day, we're like, oh my God, what's your skin color? What's your dick? What do you, what, what type of genitalia do you like? Like, it's the most fucking important thing. It's like, oh, that was a good movie. You didn't even think, like, could you? I don't know who the director of Die Hard was. I don't know who the producers were. I don't even know what director and producer do. <clears throat> All I know is Die Hard was great. But now you got to pull, oh my God, forget quality of product. It's, oh my God, vagina and skin color and gender. Yeah. And now everyone looks at it like, wow, Group X does a shit fucking job. And it doesn't help minorities or women either that this is in media where it's like for everyone to see. You know, uh, <clears throat> some female makes a bad taco at a restaurant. Okay, that's not, you don't have the world watching. And it's just like, oh, she made a bad taco. No, one like, oh, this chef, don't even know if it's female. They made a bad taco. Don't eat at that restaurant. Oh, fucking Kathleen Kennedy just can't wait to put a fucking magnifying glass in front of you. Like, Look at her vagina. Look at it and worship it. And it is black. She doesn't even like dick. Oh, my God. Look at it. We're worshiping. It's like, okay, now I have nothing to do but associate trash shit product with females. Good going, Disney. <clears throat> and then you got to wonder, let's say you're up and coming, right? Up and coming movie person. You want to work with Disney? <laughs> do you? Do you? Like, really? It's like, I, I guess those of you in the Navy could probably say the same thing. Like, there's a cursed ship. Like, the ship is shit. It's a bad ship. Are people like, who you know, captains like, no, I don't want to captain it. Admiral comes in, you, you, Captain Joe, you got cap you got a captain, you know, the USS sinks a lot. I, whoa, I don't want to. The USS sinks a lot. I think that'd be a good ship. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that's what we're talking about here, Ian. We're, we are, we are, you may not have liked it but at least meritocracy and hiring the best. That was one thing we all could have worked towards. That was one rule that was fair and equitable. You had, and you should absolutely go and fight nepotism, cronyism, racism, or bigotry event. The, yeah, your, your cousin doesn't get hired. <clears throat> there should be like anti-nepotism, anti-cronyism rules in, in U.S. labor. But that, that principally, that should be, we want the best so everyone gets the best. <clears throat> Garrett Howard, two bucks. Is it safe for a nine-to-fiver to start their own podcast? Yes, anonymously and under a different name. Never show your face. Just you, like here, there's a, you, you don't see it, but I could just remove the video. There's a little button that says end camera. You don't even buy a camera. Like you don't even have to buy a camera, just do do the audio. I would also come up with like a like a fake background, like you're you you live in one state, but you actually live in another. Uh, 
you're married when you're not or vice versa. You have a family when you don't, that kind of thing. Uh, you you work at propane, you work at Strickland Propane, propane and propane accessories. And that's what I would do. All right, that's it. Link to everything down below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.